we're here. We're going to take a couple questions. Um, we've been able to answer most, if not all of them in the chat, but I do want to bring some of them to the video um, here with our superintendent. Um, Dr. Gearing, first off, there's definitely a lot of concern and a lot of thoughts and feelings about what comes next. Um, I know we can't get you a crystal ball and, um, you know, I don't believe you have the, 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 the gift of foresight, but what are your thoughts and feelings? What would you want people to know about what comes next? What does fall look like? Yes, we know for sure that right now we're shut until the end of school. So the governor has been pretty firm about that, even as he started opening up um, other entities. Um, for the fall, I think there's potentially three scenarios that we're looking at and planning for. One is, um, of course, being back full time physically in our buildings with all of our kids. Uh, and we'll be ready for that if, if we get the opportunity to do that safely for everybody involved. I think uh, the other extreme of that is that we have a, a second spike or there's something goes wrong and the virus takes off again and we end up being completely remote, uh, in which case we will ramp up what is right now phase two of remote learning to a phase three of remote learning where I think we have to have a much more robust system of direct instruction um, and making sure that we're presenting new material to our students so that they can master the curriculum that, that is necessary to get through. And I think, of course, the, the third option is that there's a hybrid model of some kind, which means that some of our kids are back physically in the buildings with us and there's social distancing happening in our buildings, um, but some of our students are still remote. And so, of course, planning for that and making sure that we understand how to effectively and efficiently use our facilities to make that happen, who gets to be physically in the buildings and can be safe in the buildings with us, and uh, what we do about students whose parents or who themselves are not willing to put themselves at risk and come back into the buildings. And so um, our teams are planning for all of that uh, and making sure that we're ready for whichever way that eventuality goes. Um, what this is teaching us for sure is that we have to be flexible and adaptable. And so we'll continue to do the very best we can to keep you up to date on where we're where we are and, and in our planning process. One of the things that I love about living in this community and working in this community is just how caring people are. Um, Kim is one of our viewers right now, and she brought up two very good points. One, she shared there's a Facebook page, I guess it's been created to adopt a senior to help provide that recognition to our class of 2020. And as we know that they're going to miss out on, on some major life milestones or not get their major life milestones in the same way that previous graduating classes have been able to. Um, she also bring up a good question. And I know this is something we've talked about as a leadership team in a grander scheme. Um, her question specifically about meal balances um, and the notifications for people who might have outstanding meal balances. Um, Dr. Gehring, knowing that there are different fees and things that need to be collected or are typically collected, um, and knowing that we're also dealing with a historic unemployment rate in Texas and here in Austin, um, what would you say to our community members who are concerned about um, some of those, those fees and those different items that exist um, in our school? That's a, that's a really great question and a good point. And I will tell you that we have a balance to strike here uh, between being really fiscally responsible and great stewards of our taxpayer dollars and at the same time having a lot of understanding and empathy for our families and the situations they find themselves in. So folks, I will tell you that we will ask for um, fees and other requirements that, that we have um, in, in order to try to recover some of those if possible. But I assure you that we do understand that there are situations that are not in the control of folks and, and we are truly empathetic to those situations and we wanna work with you in the very best way we can. We do have a number of organizations who are stepping up and who are volunteering to help um, families and students of LISD who find themselves in difficult positions. Um, and so we urge you to reach out to us. If you have any circumstances that you need help with, please reach out to us and, and ask for help. We can't help you if we don't know that your, your challenge exists. And so if you let us know what your challenge is, we can set wheels in motion uh, to really try to reach out and see if we can help or if there's some entity in our community who can help. 
and we want to really make your situation the best it can possibly be. So don't hesitate to reach out and let us know what you need. Thank you, Dr. Gearing. Update 24, it is our 24th COVID-19 response update on Friday. It will include information about spring events, MLISD, um, and the ability for students to get back into buildings as well as teachers and staff to retrieve personal items. So please be on the lookout for that in your email inbox, text message and website, social media channel near you. Um, with that, we're going to I'm going to toss it back to Dr. Gearing to share some closing thoughts. And then we have a delightful presentation, performance, dance, song um, by Reed Elementary School. So we hope you stick around and watch that. Dr. Gearing, leaving people on a beautiful Wednesday in Central Texas, what would you like them to be left with? Yeah, thank you so much. And and thank you, everybody, for taking the time to watch this either live or if you're watching it after the fact. We really appreciate your engagement with the district and continuing to allow us to serve your needs as best we can. Um, one of the things I wanted to share with you was that our students do still have some opportunity um, to do some amazing things. And one of those opportunities is through advanced placement exams through the College Board. Um, those exams have been modified slightly, so of course they're not happening in person as they normally would this spring, um, but they are happening online uh, in a modified format. And so I just wanted to give a, a strong encouragement to our students who have previously registered for those exams, they would have registered for these in the late fall at their high schools, um, to make sure that you prepare as well as you can, get as much help as you can, um, and and go and take those exams and do the very best you can. The worst that can happen is that you cannot earn college credit, but of course the best that can happen is that you could earn college credit for, for those subjects that you're signed up to take AP tests in. So uh, I want to give you a strong encouragement to not forego that opportunity. Work hard, do the very best you can, take those exams. I think you have a great opportunity to, to uh, save some money as you head to college, um, and certainly um, that, that is something that you should plan to do.